No guys, this thing in my hand is not a Pokeball. What this is, is actually a device that might help bank anglers catch more fish. It might save you time, it might stop you from changing your baits and changing location, because what it is, is a portable fish finder. They're right underneath it. Right underneath it. Sure, ooh, a bass, a big bass, just one underneath it. With tons of bluegill running off with our line. What is going on everybody? Welcome back to the channel. Ryan Raked here bringing you another unboxing and tool video. Now last week we unboxed some new tools that I've never really used or seen and uh, you guys really liked them. I really liked them. Had a lot of fun. So I thought let's bring you another video and as you can see right here in front of me we have this portable fish finder by iBobber and Real Sonar. So what is this thing and how does it work? Let's go ahead and talk about it. So this is a portable fish finder device that you can kind of just tie a line onto and fish through, or you can cast it on out there and just try to check out what's in the water below you. Now, the capabilities are a little all over the place. It says you can check weather. It says you can check water. It says there's sonar and live imaging of some sort. So today's main idea is not only to get out there and just use this thing, but it's gonna be seeing if it works and if it's worth the value. Now these things are in the market of about $90 and I will make sure to leave a link below in my description. Now how to use these things? You have to download an actual app in order to use these. They have to be in the water to actually turn on. They come with charging devices and it works through Bluetooth. Now in order to actually activate it once again it needs to be in the water and that is when you can turn on your Bluetooth and download the app use it on your phone. Now when I did actually do that, it said my sink was seven feet deep, which is, uh, <laughs> it's kind of funny in my mind because it's not seven feet deep. So once again, today's main concept is not only getting out there and seeing if this will help us catch more fish, but just to see if it's a tool that works and if it's worth the value. So without further ado, guys, let's get out there on the water and see what this thing can do. All right guys, so we've officially got out here to our first spot. I thought we would give this thing a try by just trying to check out the depths and see how this thing actually works as far as a fish finder goes before we start fishing with it. So the pond that I picked out behind me has tons of visible fish. I'm talking loads of bluegill, bass and everything roaming right here behind me very visible very clear so this thing will give us a definite idea if what we're seeing is fish or sticks or logs or whatever it is because we are definitely going to have a clear image so let's get this thing uh untied out there on the water get the app activated and show you guys what it's all about let's get at it all right guys so the only thing i have this thing set up on is just 50 pound braid so i don't chunk it off once again this is just a little bobber fish finder I believe it probably weighs realistically just giving you an estimation somewhere in the two and a half to three ounce range so i'm gonna go ahead and activate the app real quick make sure we got that thing rocking and rolling no i don't want net fish and chill Jeez. all right we're gonna go to the sonar mode and connect i think it has to be in the water for it to actually be activated so let's go ahead and get this thing in the water real quick there we go connect to ryan rig just like that. Now, depth wise, very, very shallow right here, but there is already fish swimming all underneath it. Um, it's saying it's about four feet deep. I would say it's not necessarily correct, but it's not wrong. Let's go ahead and check out some of the other features. Okay, so it's got like a chirp sonar right here. This is supposed to tell us if anything is going underneath it. I can visually see bluegill underneath the bobber right now and I'm not seeing anything going on right here as far as uh, our signs go. School of bass about to roam right through this area. I want to see if they come up on this chirper. They're right underneath it. Right underneath it. You cannot miss that. And uh, it did change levels. It didn't pick up the fish. Let's go to this fish finding mode. This, this right here is supposed to actually specifically point out fit. Oh, okay. It's, it's seeing the fish. Okay, that's the first time it's actually done something semi-correct. There are a few fish underneath it, and it is kind of in a pocket, not necessarily. I'm going to get this thing recasted again, though. Try to get just constant, realistic ideas for you guys. And then I'm tempted to try to put, like, a worm on it, hang a bait underneath it, and see if it can actually register any fish that are biting underneath it on a hook or something. But saying there's some grass and vegetation underneath it and a ton of fish, um, it might actually be right for once 
I don't see a ton of grass underneath it though, unfortunately. So on that end, it might be misleading. There are fish though, and I'm not sure what a three means. Maybe that's like a three incher. Ooh, a bass, a big bass, just one underneath it. Let's see if it changes. Ooh, two big bass, huge bass. I'm talking like three, four pound fish. Just one underneath it. It's still registering a bunch of threes. So I'm not sure if it's saying that these fish are three pounders. Look, no more fish underneath it. It went away for a second, but then it's coming back with more random threes just straight across. So to be honest, like this thing's not working very accurately at all. Let's go ahead and see what is working. So 7.2 feet, definitely not 7.2 feet. I can tell you from here. Uh, temperatures it's saying is about 77 to 75. I think that is probably accurate. Um, it's supposed to be able to tell us other weather patterns and stuff like that, but honestly, the way that this thing is working already and how much trouble it's been, I can't even get this app to work now. Look at this. What's going on? It's bugging out on me. Come on, guys. Man, I was really having high hopes for this thing, and it seems to just be a bust. Well, guys, unfortunately, this thing's really not working at all to my expectations it feels like you can get some sort of idea of depth that's going to be off probably by about two feet uh it is picking up vegetation that's not necessarily there it's telling me that there's fish when there were fish swimming by but it was also telling me that there was fish when there wasn't fish swimming by so this thing is definitely very confusing very misleading so my next idea for this thing instead of just using it as a fish finder it is a bobber looking device let's go ahead tie a worm onto this thing throw it out there with some bait see if a fish will come and pick it up and see if that actually activates the whole sonar system and see you know if we can find a fish that way so let's go ahead and rig this thing up how i want it and uh, we'll be right back all right guys well we got our worm on we got our bobber on i see a nice juicy bass over here i'm gonna give it a cast over there check out this fish finder while there's stuff actually pecking on it yeah there's stuff not only pecking on it moving it some of their stuff six seven i don't know what six seven or threes mean but it's saying all that stuff is on our fish finder tons of bluegill running off with our line getting all sorts of riled up that's going to piss off the bass let's try to get our line closer to the edge oh yeah there's something already on it <laughs> I, I need to throw down my uh my phone if something actually picks this up I'm gonna put my phone down on the ground real quick and just try to read it. It's crazy because the fish all went away right now. And for once, the fish finder was correct. There was no fish and all the fish went away. Now there's a fish right underneath it and uh, it's not registering them either. So this thing seems to go back and forth a little bit. It's definitely not reliable. There's a school going by though. There's a fish that nosed up to it right now as we're speaking. This is wild. It's crazy because there's a live night crawler underneath these fish and they will not go for it right out there in the middle and now that that's out there let's check our sonar sonar is reading about four feet it's crazy i actually casted it further this time than i did the previous few times and uh it's saying we're in the most shallow water we've been the entire time it's crazy how this thing is working it's very inaccurate and not reliable i'm gonna put it away though and just wait by this bobber and see if anything goes after this worm that's there. Oh, we got one. We got a bass on there. Oh, oh, I didn't want to yank on him. But we had ourselves a little bass. <laughs> so it does work as a, uh, a bobber. I'm going to go ahead this time. I want to watch the fish finder. I had to put it in my pocket to try to set the hook. But uh, to be honest, I can kind of just let him set his own hook like he did right there. We finally got something boys we finally got something it took this entire time just to catch this little tiny sunfish on our bobber and the crazy thing about it is it did not register at all but i saw him so i set the hook we got ourselves our first fish using this thing as a bobber that is ridiculous guys get him back in the water that's a nice little pretty sunfish it's crazy though too because there's, there's bass everywhere man i really want to try to catch one of these bass test out a long distance cast with this thing. 
I would say that's probably about 40 to 50 yards out. Lost connection completely. All right. Well, let's see if they can even pick it up this far out. Connect. Connect. Oh, it's too far for me to connect to it. All right, let's try this one more time. Try to back out. Go back into the app. Hit sonar. Connect. So 50 yards is about too far out. Let's see how... How close I have to get it before we get a connection. About 40 yards there. About 30 yards. About 30 yards as far as you can get this thing. Where you can actually connect to it. And it's still bugging out on me. That is ridiculous. Let's head home and recap on this. All right, guys, so we're back here at the house, and I'm going to give you my final conclusion of this thing. If you have not figured it out for yourself, it's kind of a piece of garbage. It's honestly just a glorified bobber uh, that you're going to spend about $90 just to tell you uh, what the water temperature is because its capabilities seem very uh, off. Let's just put it like that. Uh, it seems like the functions were just not working properly, unfortunately, at least not for me. Um, you know, it was reading fish, but it was also telling me there was fish when there wasn't. And uh, when I could clearly see fish, it was also telling me that there wasn't fish. Um, it got the structure wrong, it got the depth wrong. The only thing it probably got right was the water temperature, and I can't even tell you if it got that right. Uh, not to mention, once we started doing like the distance cast, you know, anything past like 30 yards, you can't even read on it. So if you're trying to figure out what is in the middle of a pond or, you know, what it's like out there in the, the open, um, you're not going to be able to find out with this thing. And that's kind of what I feel like you would want to buy it for. You know, you don't want to check the, the bank right in front of you. You want to be able to check way out there. So it's kind of crazy. But sometimes, guys, when you hear something that's too good to be true, that's exactly what it is. It's too good to be true. So I'm glad that I took the fall today and spent that $90 on uh, this iBobber little sonar instead of you guys having to do it. Uh, but you know, sometimes that's just the way it is. You have to test it out and see if it works. Um, it, it seems like just stick to fishing normal. If you're going to be fishing from the bank, don't worry about scanning. Don't worry about trying to figure out depths and stuff like that. Um, at the end of the day, getting a line in the water is the best way to catch a fish, especially if you're bank fishing. But either way, guys, that is going to be it for today. I'm not leaving a link below for this item because I don't believe you should waste your money on it. Uh, but if you guys have any recommendations of items we should try out in the future, any ideas like that, make sure you drop a comment below and I'll try to check it out. Uh, but thanks again for watching, everybody, and we'll catch you all in the next one. Peace. Thank you.